ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಓಂ ಅಜ್ಞಾನತಿರಾಂಧಸ್ಯ ಜ್ಞಾನಾಂಜನಶಲಾಕೆಯ ಚಕ್ಷುರು ಮಿಲಿತನ್ ಏನ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಪಾತಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪ್ರೇಷ್ಟಾ ಭೂತಲೆ ಶ್ರೀಮತೆ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನ್ ಇತಿ ನಾಮಿನೆ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸಾರಸ್ವತಿ ದೇವೆ ಗೌರವಾಣಿ ಪ್ರಚಾರಿಣೆ ನಿರ್ವಿಶೇಷ ಶೂನ್ಯವಾದಿ ಪಾಶ್ಚಾತ್ಯ ದೇಶತಾರಿಣಿ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭೂ ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧರ ಶ್ರೀವಾಸಾದಿ ಗೌರಭಕ್ತ ವೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರೇ ವೆರಿ ಹ್ಯಾಪಿ ಟು ಬಿ ವಿತ್ ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ಟು ಶೇರ್ ಮೋರ್ ಸ್ಟೋರೀಸ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಶ್ರೀಲ ಪ್ರಾಭುಪಾತ್ಸ್ ವಂಡರ್ಫುಲ್ ಲೈಫ್ some years ago i visited one madhva sanskrit scholar in bangalore and uh, i wanted to talk to him about the issue in iskon a major issue in iskon about initiation so i went to him and asked him what is diksha or initiation according to madhva tradition so he said uh, he thought for a moment and he said diksha which diksha are you talking about so then i asked him oh you mean to say which diksha there are more than one diksha then he said yes we have uh, a matha diksha where you get initiated into a certain matha you are affiliated to a certain matha so we have something like that we have uh, ashram diksha when somebody enters sanyas ashram he takes diksha and so that's called there is a diksha around that then he said uh, there is something called vrata diksha when you take a vrata when you perform a vrata a vow that for the next 21 days i will do this or something like that there are there is a diksha where you get initiated into that vrata and uh, like this there are many kinds of diksha which diksha are you referring to because diksha varies from tradition to tradition and a particular situation or a certain purpose so then i started thinking yeah that's true diksha is an ancient sanskrit vedic cultural concept vedic culture concept in vedic culture but what are we referring to when we talk in iskon about diksha diksha guru who is the diksha guru and all of these kind of things then i started reflecting we know how shrila prabhupad representing a very ancient traditions beginning from krishna to narada krishna to brahma to narada to vyasa and then the acharyas and then chaitanya mahaprabhu and he was representing that very very ancient and spiritual tradition and now he was going to america and he was founding a worldwide organization and in the context of this worldwide organization shila prabhupad was introducing all of these important spiritual concepts and we know shila prabhupad an empowered acharya a pure devotee of krishna doing all of these things 
So when Srila Prabhupada introduced Diksha in his con, what did he have in mind? What was the meaning? What was the purport? What was the intent? And what was the practice that Srila Prabhupada was introducing? Because all that is relevant. We are talking about problem about Diksha, Diksha Guru in ISKCON, not in isolation of ISKCON. It is in our institutional life. It is in our spiritual life in the institution that Srila Prabhupada founded. So we can't take some esoteric, some Sanskrit shloka or some, some other tradition and try to understand what was, what is Diksha in our context, in Iskand's context. So the best way is to understand what Srila Prabhupada had in mind when he talked about Diksha or even more, how Srila Prabhupada articulated the meaning and the understanding of Diksha and how he implemented the practice of Diksha in his car. So what is significant is then I began to think that let's see how Srila Prabhupada introduced Diksha the first time he did. And maybe several times after that, when Srila Prabhupada presided over the Diksha ceremony, how would he describe that? Or how would Srila Prabhupada talk about that during lectures or conversations and such occasions? So it's interesting how Srila Prabhupada introduced the first Diksha ceremony, initiation ceremony. It happened in September of 1966. Let's give a little background to it. Srila Prabhupada had established the first Iskan temple and he had incorporated the Iskan society in July of 1966. That's when Srila Prabhupada had a fixed place to stay Earlier he was moving from one place to another, sometimes sharing a room with another, sharing a loft with someone else, and sharing uh, uh, the premises of, uh, with, with another yoga teacher, and all of those kind of things. Now he had a place for himself, and that was 26 Second Avenue, which became the famous first Iskan temple in Iskan. So, Srila Prabhupada had this storefront as an Indian, when I used to read Srila Prabhupada's biography, that Prabhupada had a storefront, had rented a storefront and converted that into a temple. I used to wonder, what is a storefront? You know, we, for Indians, in Indian uh, English language and our urban understanding, we don't know what is a storefront. And this was in the 1980s, you know, at least maybe now, modern day, young America, young Indians, educated Indians may have an understanding, but I definitely didn't have. I used to wonder what's a storefront, but then when you read something, you may not understand, but you keep going on. So that was what used to happen to me. Till at some point, I visited the storefront on 26 Second Avenue. <laughs> so uh, it's, a, it's a store. It's a shop. There are many shops all around. And this is also one shop if you use the Indian English language. So uh, it was a big hall. It could be like a, you know, some kind, any kind of a store that is possible there. And it was narrow and longish. And then at the back there was one washroom. And then there was another door there at the back. In the front is a big door, as wide as the width of the, door, of the store. And for some reason, I've also not figured out Americans use the word storefront for that. And uh, so, Srila Prabhupada had rented that place and he would conduct programs there where these young Americans 
who are looking for new life, new meaning of life, for trying to understand Eastern philosophy, Indian philosophy, Buddhism, and who are also experimenting on drugs for some higher consciousness experience. All of these kind of young people would come there and Srila Prabhupada would conduct uh, bhajans, kirtans, and he would give a class. And Prabhupada was living in an apartment on the first floor just behind. So Prabhupada would go through that rear door and then it would go to a courtyard and there you there's a flight of steps which would go to one flat in that apartment. One. And that place, that's where Prabhupada used to live. So Prabhupada used to live there, cook there, he would bathe there, there was a washroom and all of that and he would come here and conduct classes, kirtans and all of that and would go back. This was the kind of a situation that existed at that time. So, so this happened in July, July 13th, 14th when the incorporation of ISKCON happened. Now we are talking about July, August, September. Not very long, just about two and a half, three months, two months, a little over two months. So Srila Prabhupada would conduct classes and then in one of the classes and there were a few people, young American boys and girls who were coming and they were trying to understand what Swamiji, they used to call Srila Prabhupada Swamiji at that time, what Swamiji is going to tell. And they would go meet Swamiji in the, in the apartment also where there would be a little more intimate conversations. They would ask questions and ask, Prabhupada, ask Swamiji about his life, about India and all their, their questions about philosophy and all of those kind of intimate discussions would happen up there in the apartment. And this was more formal and many newcomers would come. And Srila Prabhupada, we talked about how he would go from here to the Tompkins Square Park and have kirtans in the, on Sundays and all of those kind of things. So one day, actually he had spoken in, formally in the apartment, it looks like, and uh, about initiation and his plan to conduct initiation. So one day devotees asked Srila Prabhupada Swamiji, what is initiation? Important question for me to answer the Madhva scholar. And Srila Prabhupada, a brilliant communicator of Krishna conscious philosophy, his answer was, I will tell you later. So it was brilliant answer because <laughs> Prabhupada didn't answer, but increased the level of curiosity for all the young people who were coming there. So they all were waiting to know what is Swamiji going to tell about initiation. But he said, I'll tell you at the right time. I'll tell you later. So they were even more curious. And then Prabhupada had, announced, had pointed out September 8th, 1966 is Krishna Janmashtami, the day Krishna appeared on earth 5,000 years ago. So very important, Srila Prabhupada is telling about Krishna and we are supposed to become devotees of Krishna, bhakti to Krishna and the movement is called, the society is called the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. So Krishna is so important and Krishna Appearance Day. So Prabhupada said, on that day we should chant more. We should hear about Krishna and we should fast till midnight. At midnight Krishna appeared and we will have a feast then. And so you can imagine for these young Americans, boys and girls who are coming there, just given off drug, some of them, some of them still taking drugs maybe, some of them had become vegetarians, some of them had not yet become vegetarians probably all kinds of young American boys and girls and they are hearing from Swamiji about all these things and then they are told that they have to fast whole day and then Prabhupada was very considerate. He said, if you find 
fasting becoming too difficult, you can go up to the apartment there, I'll have some fruit. You can have a fruit there. So this was the concession that Srila Prabhupada had given. So on the day of Krishna Janmashtami, Srila Prabhupada came down and he conducted the class. Of course, there was another interesting thing that happened on that particular day. Usually, Srila Prabhupada would speak on Bhagavad Gita. And at that time, Srila Prabhupada's own Bhagavad Gita was not available. There was Bhagavatam available, but he would be speaking on Bhagavad Gita verses. And he would use Dr. Radhakrishnan's Bhagavad Gita, Oxford University Press publication. So Prabhupada said, uh, Dr. Radhakrishnan's Bhagavad Gita was 90% accurate. But Prabhupada had warned that somehow in Dr. Radhakrishnan's explanations, he would go into an impersonal understanding of the absolute truth. So I won't go into those that analysis. I will do that another occasion and how Srila Prabhupada explained that. There are very, very interesting uh, stories around that. We'll keep it for another occasion. So Prabhupada would read from the Bhagavad Gita of Dr. Radhakrishnan and then he would explain. But then on that particular day, uh, Prabhupada was actually working on his own Bhagavad Gita. He was typing the manuscripts, all that was also going on. So one of the young Americans, students who was, we, we don't, we may not call him disciple at this point of time. They were not formal disciples. They were just eager to know and associate with Swamiji. They were coming, they were inquisitive, they were curious, they were very sincere. They really wanted to know what's all this about. And they were coming to understand more. So they asked Swamiji, can you read from your manuscript? We have heard that you are preparing the Bhagavad Gita. So Swami Prabhupada was a little amused and very happy to hear that. And so he had one of the boys go up to the apartment, bring the bundle, and they brought the bundle. And then Prabhupada read for the next one hour translations and the purports that he had compiled for a long, for, for, for a certain number of, about an hour or so. And then at the end of the talk, Prabhupada said, and Prabhupada had announced already, the next day after Janmashtami, September 8th, 1966 was Janmashtami. September 9th was going to be the initiation day. Srila Prabhupada didn't tell what is significant about the next day of Janmashtami, we all know now today. That was the day Srila Prabhupada appeared. He didn't talk about that one, at least it looks like from the biographical information that I have read about. And uh, it was supposed to be the next day of Krishna Janmashtami. So, Srila, so everybody knew that next day was going to be the initiation, the beads were bought. And Srila Prabhupada said, you should get beads from a store and told some of the women who were coming. One of them was Jan, Mike's girlfriend, and also supposed to be who have given their name for the first initiation. So Prabhupada said, or rather we will say, Swamiji said, women are patient, they have patience and they should make the beads. And so Jan had taken it upon herself, maybe someone else also helped her, and she was going to make the beads, and the beads would have 100, and the mala would have the 108 beads, uh, beads bought from a store in America, some American store. Um, and so it was not Tulasi beads and all of those, kind. you know, where you don't have those kind of things at that time. So, at the end of the class on Janmashtami, Krishna Janmashtami day, Srila Prabhupada says, now I will explain what is initiation. All these young boys and girls, they leaned forward. They were alert. They wanted to hear because the next day some of them had given their names and they're going to go through that. What is initiation? There was speculation, discussion among them. It looks like some kind of a passage of rites. Oh, what is it? So let's wait for Swamiji to explain. 
And now Srila Prabhupada is going to explain. One more thing before I give what Prabhupada said. There was another thing that was happening during those days. Those days when Prabhupada was, Swamiji was giving classes and he would have discussions, questions and answers. Invariably, some of them had read about some Indian philosophy, Buddhism philosophy, some, some Indian Hinduism, Hindu guru, yoga teacher, and all of those kind of things. And they would have heard those things and they would come and ask Swamiji questions because they knew Swamiji was very scholarly. Swamiji was very authentic. He always referred to the Shastra, scriptures, the Vedic literatures, the previous Acharyas. And Swamiji looked so effulgent and so confident. And there is a certain kind of a, you know, you can trust Swamiji. So there was a kind of a confidence in Swamiji. And so they would ask him those kind of questions that they would come across. So very often the theme would be, the questions would be, uh, I have heard that we should meditate on God and by doing meditation on God, gradually we will realize God and we will become God. And that way there is oneness between us and God. And so we become God. So this was the common, very often popular theme and question among, and Srila Prabhupada would strongly speak about this. This is, a, this is a, a philosophy that's not explained in the Gita and not explained in the Vaishnava tradition. According to the Vaishnava tradition, according to the Bhagavad Gita, we are all part and parcel of Krishna. We are servant of Krishna. Krishna is the Supreme Master. Prabhupada often quoted verses from the Upanishads. Nityo nityanam chetanas chetananam eko bahunam yo vidadati kama kata Upanishad where it says that the living entities are many and there is the Lord who is one. Both of them are eternal and they are eternally the same. The Lord will eternally be the Lord and the living entity part and parcel will eternally be the part and parcel. The Lord is conscious, the living entity is conscious. Chetanas Chetanana, Nityo Nityana, eternal and eternal. Eko Bahunam Yo Vidadati Kama. And that one is the provider of everything that the many conscious eternal entities want or desire. So one is the supplier, one is the receiver. The supplier, the receiver cannot become the supplier. He's always eternally the receiver. So these kind of ideas Srila Prabhupada had often talked about. And then Prabhupada would often say, if somebody says, I am God, you know, it's, a, it's an absurd statement. I realize God, I meditate on God and I become God. You know what God is? God controls the planetary movements. And I start controlling the planetary movements. What kind of an absurdity that is. Is the sun going to listen to me? Is the moon going to, unless I am some insane guy thinking that I have become God. Now I have God realized and I am controlling all the stars and the planets and the moon and all of those kind of things. How absurd it is. So Prabhupada would strongly speak against this kind of an understanding and say, no, from the Bhagavad Gita, from the teachings of the Vedic literatures, we understand we are not God. We are servant of God. We, may, we are of the quality of God, but not God. God is God. We are always his part. Amsha. Mamaivamsho jiva loke jiva bhuta sanatana. This is Krishna's instruction in the Gita. Sanatana we are Amsha. Eternally we are Amsha. And his Amsha, he is the Purna, he is the full. So this is the philosophy Prabhupada often would talk. And then sometimes, very often, these questions would come about. I am, someone would come and declare that I have been practicing yoga for the last one year and I have become God. You know, all those kind of things that these kind of people would come and, uh, and uh, declare. So Prabhupada would strongly say, if, you, if someone says he is God, 
He is not God. He is the opposite. Not G O D. He is D O G. You know, these kind of very, very strong themes that Prabhupada would talk about in his classes. And uh, so these young Americans, they would hear about all these things and then, oh, Swamiji says that we are not God. We are actually servant of God and all of those kind of things. So it was, a, it was one of the popular themes that Srila Prabhupada had repeatedly stressed in his classes, in his discussions and question answers and all of that. And these young Americans who were at that time coming, they were familiar with that. Now coming back. Janmashtami day, morning class is over. Next day is going to be the initiation. And Srila Prabhupada had said, he's now going to tell what is initiation. Everyone is curious, waiting to hear what Swamiji will say is initiation. Then Prabhupada pauses for a moment, <clears throat> clears his throat, and then he says, initiation means the spiritual master accepts the student as his disciple and agrees to deliver him. And the student accepts the spiritual master and agrees to worship him as God. There was silence. Everyone was hearing, was just absorbing what Swamiji had just told. Then Swamiji asked, any questions? It was just still just descending. They were just, just absorbing what Swamiji had just defined as initiation. They were silent. Swamiji rose from his seat, turned around and walked to the door opened the door, walked down, shut the door behind him, and he went away. And these young Americans, they were looking at each other. Did you hear that? And they said, yes. Another one said, one said, Swamiji just dropped a bomb. Another said, yes, my, it was mind blowing. And then they started discussing. So does that mean Swamiji is God? We have to worship him as God? What does this mean? Maybe he is God. We didn't understand. <laughs> you know, maybe he's God who has come from India. And someone said, no, it can't be. Always Swamiji has been telling, if somebody says I am God, he is not God. He is not G-O-D. He is D-O-G. So this was a popular theme. They had heard about it. Now what is Swamiji saying? So they started again discussing, not much time. Then someone said, maybe then I'm not ready for the initiation tomorrow. I should drop out my, from the list. So all these kind of discussions were happening. So then they had among them, there was one, uh, one of them who was considered to be very intelligent, very sharp, and a little older also. And that was Keith. Keith was for some reason in a hospital. So they all went to the hospital and they asked, they discussed Hover, Valley, and a few others. They went to the hospital and they discussed. You know what Swamiji said? Swamiji said initiation means that uh, the spiritual master accepts the disciple, the student, and agrees to deliver. And the student should accept him as the master, spiritual master and agree to worship him as God. What does this mean? So then uh, Keith, the supposed to be the intelligent one among the, all of them, and he said, uh, uh, maybe you should go and ask and ask for a clarification. And then they all discussed among them. They said, yes, we should go and ask for a clarification. So they came back. They went to Swamiji's room in the apartment up there on the first floor. And uh, then they 
asked Swamiji, Swamiji, you just said that we must, the disciple, initiation means we must, the disciple must accept the spiritual Swamiji as you as, must worship you as God. Does that mean you are God? And immediately Swamiji sprang forth and he said, no! Spiritual master is not God. Spiritual master is the representative of God. And because he can deliver God to the students, and because he speaks on behalf of God, he is due the same respect as God. He is not God. God is God. The spiritual master is a confidential servant of God. So these things, Prabhupada clarified, Swamiji clarified, and now it became clear to them that now they came. Actually, what Srila Prabhupada was doing, this is a wonderful thing that Prabhupada was doing. When he, in this wonderful, short, crisp articulation of what is initiation, in those few English sentences, Prabhupada had packed in volumes of meaning explained in the Vedic literature. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, it is described, Acharya maam vijaniyan nava manyeta karhichit. This is Krishna speaking. Krishna is telling how an Acharya, a spiritual master, must be regarded. Krishna is saying, Acharya maam vijaniyan, maam vijaniyan, to be considered, to be understood, to be regarded, like me. Acharya maam vijaniyan, na avamanye, na avamanye takarhichit. He should never be disrespected. So this is Krishna's instruction in the Srimad Bhagavatam, how the spiritual master has to be regarded. Namartya buddhya suyeta. And the spiritual master should not be regarded as a martya buddhya. Martya means an ordinary human being who appears in this world, lives for some time and dies. He is known as a martya, one who dies, like any other conditioned souls. Na martya buddhya, buddhya means conception, understanding. So one should not regard the acharya as an ordinary human being who appears like the countless human beings who come here under the force of karma, that we take birth here, we live for some time and we die. An acharya is not to be regarded like that. Maam vijaniyan, na avamanyeta karhichit, never to be disrespected. Namartya buddhya should not be considered as an ordinary mortal. Namartya buddhya suyeta, and never to be envied, because such a spiritual master, sarva deva mayo guru, the spiritual master is a representative of all the devatas. The spiritual master, Prabhupada translated this as Sarva Deva Mayo Guruhu. It means the spiritual master is the sum total of all demigods. I mean, these are wonderful translations that Srila Prabhupada made. And he Prabhupada explained that the spiritual master is a representative of all devatas or the spiritual master has all the divine qualities of the devatas. So some of these kind of explanations Srila Prabhupada had given. So Prabhupada was actually referring to this verse. And later on, based on this verse, which, was in, which is in the Srimad Bhagavatam, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had explained this further. And later Acharya Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakura had also described Sakshad Haritvena Samastha Shastraihi Uptastata Bhavyata Eva Sadbihi and so on. So it's one of the important uh, foundational principles. Uh, I must go forward quickly. <clears throat> so uh, Srila Prabhupada had described this as the initiation. One, 
the spiritual master accepts the disciple and agrees to deliver. What is the meaning of deliver? Uh, that is also very nicely explained in the Acharyas, which we sing every day in the morning in our temples. Yahara prasade bhai ye bhava toriyayai krishna prapti ho yaha hoite. It is by the mercy of the spiritual master one can cross over the material world. Yahara prasade bhai ye bhava toriyayai. Bhava means bhava, material world, the world of birth and death. E bhava toriyayai krishna prapti ho yaha hoite. One can cross over the material world and he can deliver Krishna to the disciple. This is the meaning of deliverance. And it happens by the mercy of the spiritual master. This is what the spiritual master is agreeing. I will do that to you. I will deliver you from this material world and I will deliver Krishna to you. Provided, what is that the disciple has to do? The disciple accepts the spiritual master, the spiritual master and agrees to worship him as God or as good as God, as a representative of God with the same respect due to God because he is a confidential servant of God. So this was the wonderful explanation Srila Prabhupada gave on that day. And then the next morning and all these, there were 10 men and one woman. They all joined. It didn't happen in the storefront. It happened in the first floor of that house, or the room, the, the, on the living room where Prabhupada was sitting, was uh, uh, living there. And there Prabhupada had created a mound of earth and then someone had brought orange crate, you know, wooden crates are there. They had brought that one, broken that up, and that was supposed to be the wood. You know, in India, when we do yagna, we get special summit wood. There, what can Swamiji get? He could, the best he could get was orange crate, broken that up, and then Swamiji had arranged, and, and there were some bananas, and then some flowers, and all the decoration, and then Swamiji told all those, everybody was sitting around each other and none of them were shaved up. They were not even wearing dhoti, kurta. They were in their American attire and they sat there and then Swamiji said, we will all chant and then they all chanted one round Hare Krishna mantra. And then Swamiji said, started chanting, oh, all of you repeat after me. And they were all, you know, these young Americans, they were all there figuring out what's going on here. Then. Swamiji said, Om, chant after me. And everyone said, Om, Apavitraha. Everyone, for the first time hearing all these complex Sanskrit words. Om, Apavitraha, Pavitrova, Sarva, Vasto, Gato, Piva, Yasmare, Pundari, Kaksham, Bahyantara, Bahya, Abhyantara, Shuchi, Shuchi, Shri Vishnu, Shri Vishnu. She made them chant all those kind of things. They were trying to figure out and, and then... Swamiji said, now one by one can come and then he would give hand over the mala and then he would give them a name. This was another thing. And then Swamiji said, you will get a new name and the name will end. It will be a name of Krishna and the name will end with Dasa or Dasi for men or women which means you are a servant of Krishna. This was all new for these young Americans. It must have been a wonderful experience. And then after that, he, Prabhupada, Swamiji gave names. Hover became higher Griva Dasa. Valley became, uh, 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 Wally became Umapati Dasa. Mike, Mike became Mukunda Dasa. Jan, one, the lone American uh, woman who was there, she became Janaki Devi Dasi. So like this, all of them got the name and then still Srila Prabhupada, Swamiji lit the, lit the fire, sacrificial fire. And then, they, and then Swamiji would chant some mantras and then Swaha, then they would th throw all those different uh, grains into the fire and the whole ceremony. And then everybody was wondering with billowing smoke, oh my God, 
Will the fire department show up now? Will the firemen, if they come and see, what are we going to tell them? And everybody was looking at each other and were worried. Swamiji was not concerned. He went on with his swaha and the chanting and all of that. And then it all ended. Everyone was, you know, it was like a new experience. And they would call each other very self-consciously with their new names. They're trying to figure out. And then all of them at the end of the ceremony, then there it was. A, and Prabhupada gave a small talk. Swamiji gave a talk. And he, again, he explained what it means to worship him, regard him as God and, and as, 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 uh, as good as God, uh, respect due to God and all of those kind of things. And not God. Guru is not God. The spiritual master is a servant of God. All those clarification. And then everybody left. Swamiji was alone to clean up the whole place. Just see the thing that Srila Prabhupada was doing. And, uh, uh, you know, 10, 11, so many, few of them, and then those devotees took initiation. There were many more who were just sitting and watching and all of that. And Swamiji had to clean up everything. So, <clears throat> This was the first initiation story. Then we all know now there is first initiation and Srila Prabhupada called this the Harinam Diksha, Harinam initiation. And after a few years, it was 1968. So this was the first, first initiation that happened. Now we will talk about the short story about the first, second initiation. So once again, it was 1968. Now, 66 to 68. Two years have passed. Prabhupada, Swamiji has conducted many first initiations by now. And there have been many, few temples. There is temple in New York. There is temple in Boston. There is a temple in San Francisco. There is one temple in, uh, in uh, Montreal, Canada. And I'm not too sure, maybe Hamburg, Germany. So already Swamiji and his, and his disciples have gone and started a few temples. Now in 1968, Swamiji is in Boston. And now he says he's going to introduce the second initiation. And those who have taken first initiation, they're going to take second initiation. Once again, everyone is curious, what is the second initiation? And again, Swamiji says, I'll tell you at the right time. <laughs> and they're all curious. And then on a certain date, and then Swamiji says, the second initiation is only for men. So that was a very disturbing thing for the women disciples who had taken. And they were thinking, what is this? Why is Swamiji doing this? This is a kind of a discrimination. And they were really upset about it. They felt slighted. They felt discriminated. And they were very upset that why is Swamiji doing this? And there were actually only two women at that time in Boston. One was Govinda Devi Dasi. Another was Jadurani. Both of them very, very, you know, very serious, very committed very devoted to Swamiji, ready to do anything for Swamiji. And, uh, and, uh, but Swamiji said it's only for men because that was the policy of the Gaudiya Mat. And that was the, generally the, that's a tradition in India, right? The second initiation was called the Brahmana initiation. And that's the initiation where you will get the Gayatri Mantra. And it's very well established in India. Gayatri Mantra only men chant. What's this? Women chanting Gayatri? That's unheard of. And that was the policy of Gaudiya Mat, as far as I've understood. That's what I've understood. And that's what Srila Prabhupada announced too. So, on the day of second initiation, it was happening in Boston. There was one uh, student from Boston University, Div Divinity School. He was studying religion and he was studying Indian religion. He had interest. His name was Matthews, a young student, a young fellow. Maybe he was doing a, a scholar. Maybe he was doing his PhD or something like that. And then, uh, so Swamiji said he can be invited as the chief guest 
during the second, you know, Prabhupada was doing all kinds of things just to get people to come and hear and they should hear about Krishna. Maybe their hearts will change. Prabhupada was, you know, he found different ways to get. So he, he, Dr. Professor Matthews, he was not actually a professor. Prabhupada would call him Professor Matthews. And then he would say, no, 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 Swamiji, I'm not yet a professor. He would say. And so Matthews was, uh, uh, maybe he was a doctoral student or something. He was called as the uh, special guest during the ceremony. And then once again, a sacrificial fire and all that was conducted. And then Swamiji spoke about second initiation. And he said, it was actually my spiritual master who introduced this. And my spiritual master would give the Brahmana Diksha to even people who are not born in Brahmanical families, because this is actually the true uh, Vedic tradition. And uh, uh, so anybody who has got, acquired some right guna and karma has undergone certain purification rites and if he is serious in spiritual life can take second initiation and which is the brahmana initiation will be given gayatri mantra so uh, then uh, matthews asked swamiji does that mean uh, they have to take some special vows are there any special vows that these uh, these candidates who are taking the second initiation Swamiji said, no, there is no special vow. They have to chant the Gayatri Mantra that will be given to them. And then do they have to fast uh, for something? No, Swamiji said, no, there is no special fasting or anything. They just have to chant the special mantras. And so uh, Swamiji conducted the fire sacrifice once again. And again, there was smoke and all this chanting going on. You know, generally, the neighbors of ISKCON, we become very unpopular among the neighbors of our temples. And here too, the neighbor was a landlord and the landlord's wife, uh, she was a, you know, off, an alcoholic woman and then she would get very upset with the devotees and what they do. And now she's hearing, she's seeing some smoke coming and then hearing on all these chants. And while this chanting is going on, she comes rushing into the into her into the house into the temple the, where the devotees are conducting this ceremony she opens the door forcibly walks in and then she looks her hair is all disheveled and she's her garment is also disheveled and then she's looking at them uh, and then she's very upset and she's drunk obviously and she's very upset and she looks at everybody there and then she's just god damn this house and then she turns around and goes back, slams the door and walks away. Swamiji is very peaceful. He looks at her, he hears her and then he asks them, what did she say? Did she say this is a house of God? <laughs> Swamiji heard it as house of God. She said this goddamn house or something. That's what she had said. Now, then the, the disciple said, no, no, Swamiji, she's a drunkard and she's a, she's, a, she's, a, she's a troublemaker like that. Anyway, and then this, the ceremony went on. And then Swamiji noticed that the boys are all there participating in the ceremony and the two girls, Govinda Dasi and Jadurani, are not there. So they were actually so upset that they were not included for the ceremony they stayed back in the apartment, a certain distance away, and they were crying. Govinda Dasi was crying that we are feeling left out. But then at some point, they made up their mind, what's this? You know, we are going to miss Swamiji's talk. And they decided, we will, they kept aside and they came running back. And the ceremony was going on and Prabhupada was still talking. And then as they entered the room, so gracious of Srila Prabhupada. Swamiji looked at them and said, Oh, I was wondering, I was thinking about you. Where were you? And Krishna has sent you. You know, so sweet of Srila Prabhupada to acknowledge those two young girls who were feeling hurt like that. And Srila Prabhupada said, Oh, Krishna has sent you. And so they sat down there <clears throat> and they watched the ceremony going on and the whole ceremony happened. And then the next day, you know, you see, you can imagine, Srila Prabhupada must have thought over. 
because those few days, few years, one or two years that went by, Prabhupada used to ask these young, his disciples, Govinda Dasi and few, understand about American culture, American society, American practices, how women do everything that men do. So Prabhupada had heard about all those kind of things. So the next day in the morning, Prabhupada calls Govinda Dasi and her husband, Gaur Sundar, and has a talk. And then he says, I've thought over, in America, women can also get Gayatri Mantra and they can also chant the Gayatri Mantra, but they will not have the threat. The previous day, Prabhupada had given draped a thread around each one of them and made them chant Gayatri, how to chant Gayatri, all that had happened. So Prabhupada said the next day, he would conduct a ceremony. And the next day in the night, evening, they had another ceremony only for Govinda Dasi and Jadurani. And both of them, Prabhupada gave them Gayatri Mantra and he said, in America, women can also do as much as men do. There's no difference spiritually. So let them also get. These are all unprecedented, very, very unusual things that Srila Prabhupada was doing according to time, place and circumstances. There's a very beautiful verse in the Srimad Bhagavatam. I'll, uh, I'll read this verse. <clears throat> Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Mantrani mantra uh, mantrena anena devasya kuryat dravyamaya mayim buddhaha saparyam vividhair dravyai desha kala vibhagavit. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. This is the 12th syllable mantra for worshipping Lord Krishna. One should install the physical form of the Lord and with the chanting of the mantra, one should offer flowers and fruits and other varieties of foodstuffs exactly according to the rules and regulations prescribed by the authorities. But this should be done in consideration of place, time and attendant conveniences and inconveniences. And Prabhupada explains here, now, according to, because it says, Desha Kala uh, Vibhagavit and Saparyam Vividhai Dravyair Desha Kala Vibhagavit. The paraphernalia Dravya that you use should be according to Desha Kala, according to practical circumstances and all of those kind of things. So you can see how Srila Prabhupada, according to time circumstances, he was presenting, he was, he was, Re, he was introducing all of these ancient Vedic practices in ISKCON. And so now you can see what is the meaning of Diksha and what is the meaning of first initiation, what is the meaning of second initiation, how Srila Prabhupada implemented all of these things is a wonderful learning and a wonderful understanding. With this we will stop here. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna.